What is up, my friend? You're listening to the Anthony John Amix podcast. This is episode number four, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about how childhood trauma, or any trauma for that matter, can hurt the growth of your business and keep you stalled out and stuck. So with that being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Anthony John Amix podcast, the one and only podcast designed to help you become unstoppable in life and business. My name is Anthony John Amix. My friends call me AJ. And my goal with this podcast is to help you remember who you truly are so you can maintain your center in the chaos, embody your potential, and unlock freedom in your life and business. That being said, let's get into today's show. All right, welcome back. I'm really excited about today's episode because I feel like not enough people are really talking about this topic. You know what I mean? I mean, I talk with a lot of the mover and shakers in this industry, and uh, I coach a handful of them. And a lot of the ones that I personally know, they've done a lot of deep work, a lot of very, very deep work, but they don't really share that information publicly because to do so for many of them would be off brand. Yet they've done and they continue to do the deep work, which is what we're going to be diving into today. We're going to be talking about childhood trauma and how it impacts the growth of your business. Now, maybe you're thinking, AJ, I don't have any childhood trauma. Like I wasn't raped. I wasn't molested. Like I'm good. And maybe you are, yet I used to think the exact same thing. See, the thing is, is trauma doesn't have to be some big event. I mean, for many entrepreneurs and many business owners, it's this small T trauma, right? These small T trauma are the ones that are keeping them stuck and stalled out. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not here trying to downplay big T traumas, like the rapes, the molestations, the abuse. I mean, I've worked with and I've talked to a lot of people who have unfortunately experienced these things. My intention is for us to be on the same page. Like there's two types of traumas. There's the big T types and the small T types. And we're going to be unpacking what I'm talking about um, today. Now, before I bring on today's guest, I want to let you know about a digital book I've created to help you better understand what today's guest will be talking about. Just go to www.ajamyx.com slash book to grab it. Now, it's 100% free and it will make the rest of this episode so much more impactful. Again, simply go to ajamyx.com slash book to grab the book for free now. All right, let's get back to the episode. Today's topic is something I work deeply on with my good friend and mentor, Christopher John Stubbs. And Christopher is one of my go-to people when I feel led to dive deeply into my own insecurities and wounds and find healing and powerful perspectives. I mean, he's one of the few people who publicly talks about doing the deep work. He understands it. He embodies it more than like, man, anyone um, I've ever met, anybody I know, he's had a profound impact on my life and business. And he's one of the best coaches in the world. He helps his clients collapse, man, like 10 years of healing uh, into a day or so. I've experienced this personally with him, and I've sent some of my friends to him who have experienced similar results. And Christopher comes from some humble beginnings, some very dark beginnings, and he's found um, a lot of light in as much of the darkness as possible up to this point. And he's one of the most kindest, most powerful men I know. So with that being said, let's bring Christopher onto the show. Dude, uh, Christopher, welcome to the show, brother. Glad to have you here, man. Thank you. Glad to be here. So today, dude, we're going to be talking about something um, that I feel like you're probably one of the best people in the world um, at helping people with, which is overcoming trauma, right? And we can talk about childhood trauma or whatever trauma, it doesn't, doesn't matter. But I want to, before we like hop into it uh, a bit, because I think for a lot of high achievers that they listen to the show, they're probably like, I don't have any trauma, right? So before we even hop into like the impacts of trauma and how it impacts business and how it stalls them out. Let's just kind of define, like, what, it, what do you define is trauma? First off, I think everyone is served by this work. And in fact, the ones that uh, tend to stay trapped the longest are the ones that grew up with the perfect child, what the, you know, the perfect childhood. Because they're like, what, what the hell's wrong with me? Like, why, why is this part not working? Why is this aspect of my life not working? And I hear all these other people's stories and they've been raped, molested, violated in all these ways. And I don't have any of that. My parents were awesome. We had a stable family. We, everything was great. But for some reason, I struggle and I can't seem to bust past these certain glass ceilings and, and I don't know what's going on. And it just makes no sense to me. And so... They're searching for, they can't find these, these traumatic things. But uh, even if it's not, you know, classified as trauma, if there's so many layers of, of uh, the developmental stages and how that can play into who a person shapes into. And so 
the short version would be, you know, even while you're in your mom, you're being saturated. Every thought she thought thinks there's wires firing in here. And then there's a hypothalamus pumping out peptides that are flowing down into the bloodstream and locking into the cells. So every belief she has about sex, money, men, God, life, anything to do with anything, you are having a visceral experience in your body. You don't have the cognitive reasoning, reasoning to make anything up about it, which means traditional therapy and talk therapy can't actually get you there, or talk coaching. You can't ask any questions to get to the bottom of that. You can't, there's not pathways that lead to that because there's no cognitive processing involved in that. It's just an experience of, of being saturated in this soup of whatever her experiences were. Um, uh, so, you know, if you marinated a steak for nine months in your favorite marinade, it'd be very well saturated. For sure. Uh, and we're being saturated. From um, so just that stage alone is huge. Birth uh, is probably one of the biggest traumas for many, many people, especially culture. It's your first time coming into the life, into this life in the physical body outside the womb where everything was provided. It's really very, very similar to being kicked out of the Garden of Eden, or, you know, the story of the Garden sure. of Eden. You know, Adam and Eve supposedly had a heaven on earth. Everything was provided. They didn't have to do anything. And then they're ousted. And now everything has to be earned by the sweat of their brow, right? They, they have all these challenges of being human. A uh, very similar thing. You're in the womb. Everything's provided. Perfect temperature. You've got this heartbeat that's playing this melodic drum tone and, and just everything. You just don't have to do anything. It's just total state of being. And now you're going through this birth process. And depending on how that is, maybe you're induced or smacked or put under bright lights or scrubbed or separated from your mom or all these things. Um, just that alone has the far majority of people in, in at least Western culture, if not the majority of the world, having massive trauma just in being born. And then you have all the developmental stages where the, ne or the next stages for the typically the first six, seven years of life where uh, potty training is a big era uh, where a lot of stuff happens. And, and any conditioning we have about being rewarded for doing what's what's right and being punished for doing what people don't want us to do. Even if you don't remember major spankings or abuse or anything, there's so much conditioning that happens. You come as like this top of the line computer that's operating at maximum efficiency. And by the time you're six or seven, you have so much programming that is, is, is off. It's been handed down by our parents that, no matter who you are, uh, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. You've got all kinds of viruses and faulty programming in there that have you misperceiving what the world really is and what, what's going on. Dude, it's so fascinating. This topic totally, totally fascinates mm -hmm. me, especially uh, my daughter going into her toddler years. She turned one uh, this month, last month, last month. So like we're going into that wonderful time known as toddler. <laughs> now, a lot of people, man, they don't talk about this childhood trauma thing or trauma birthing. They, like for whatever reason, they don't talk about it. Like I feel like at least in Western culture, definitely here in America, even dude, I mean, I've been traveling Europe for almost four or five months now. Um, it's, it's very, very similar here. You do not talk about trauma. You don't talk about emotions. I mean, you just sweep that shit under the rug and, and that's about it. Right. And, I know that was the culture I was raised in. That was the culture you were raised in. And so people are like, yo, don't talk about that. Even like going to counseling, hiring a coach, therapist, seeking outside um, help. Uh, at least my culture, they were like, you're fucking weak. If you don't handle your own shit, you're not being a fucking man. And that translated even into the women, right? Uh, Sarah, my wife, she really has a lot of this. Of like, I need to do it on my yeah. own. That's kind of her communist culture that she had here in Romania. Now, I've gotten to a place where I've learned that perspective didn't serve me. I'm kind of like, okay, um, I'm good with that. Now let me find a new perspective. But I really want to uh, dive into, like, why is it so important to heal the trauma? Why is it so important to talk about it, to look at it, and heal it? Like, what are the impacts that it's going to have on our business and our lives? Yeah. So when you ask that, the thing that comes up is, is a lot of the big names uh, – and, and it's ultra successful entrepreneurs that I've been able to help launch. 
And um, what I saw were, were high level producers that were really creating big results already. They, I worked with them, we were able to help them move through a lot of this stuff. And then they moved from maybe making a hundred grand a month to a million a month, personal take home, right? And things like that. So you're seeing a, certainly a 10X um, with greater ease, right? So they're in more balance instead of the hustle and the grind and the self abuse and, and the distraction and disconnection and lack of balance where they're not taking care of their home life. Usually they've honed in on their business. They focused everything on, on making money and everything else has struggled. Their health, their well being, their peace, their spirituality, their, their relationships, their parenting, all the things that on their deathbed, they will be like, those will be the keys that made them feel like their life is a success, but they've honed in on just money. Now, really the root of that is they feel like a nobody and they made up the story that if they had a lot of money, a lot of things and, and social acceptance and like, wow, look at this guy, how successful he is, that they will feel fulfilled. Um, but on their deathbed, the far majority of these people, if they stayed in that state would be like, no, man, I wish I would have, you know, a lot of things. And so my experience of them is when they don't clear this up and the same for me, of course, my experience in this is just coming from so much trauma myself and overcoming, 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 uh, and liberating myself one, one step at a time. Uh, to tremendous levels from from some of the lowest places to some of you know i I honestly feel like i 'm one of the luckiest men in the world and one of the most blessed men in the world. I know that term luck could be looked down on, uh, but I feel like luck is a very very strong factor, uh, but it 's actually you can make yourself lucky um, but the analogy I best like is it 's like these high level producers or these people because of the bottom line is we all have the same potential, right? We all have infinite potential. And it's our birthright. It's our, our given right to be able to access and live in that. In fact, it's our integrity. Uh, to, uh, the, under the definition of integrity is to be aligned with one's true nature. Well, beyond all the trauma and the stories and the conditioning, every one of our true nature is, is limitlessness, right? So... Uh, to be in integrity, we would actually need to be growing and expanding and, and removing the, the mask, the personas, the, the conditioned programming that's not working, and it's ever expanding into the next greatest version of ourselves. But anyway, the analogy would be uh, everyone's like this, uh, you know, you could be a, a, a speedboat, a jet boat, but you've got an anchor, a big ass anchor dragging on the bottom, right? So you keep hammering down the whole, they're always like more gas, more throttle, more gas, more throttle, harder, harder. Like they're always preaching about how grind and push and struggle and, and work on the weekend and, and get up early. And it's all about the grind and the struggle in that stage of the game or that mindset. Well, why not just raise the anchor? right? Totally. <laughs> Why not just raise the anchor? Or another analogy would be you have this big backpack and every time you have a trauma that's unaddressed, you're putting a big rock in the backpack and you're climbing this big mountain of the ultimate version of you, your ultimate version of true success. But every trauma and the traumas don't just happen in childhood. Have you filed bankruptcy? Have you been divorced? Have you have you gotten a car accident? Uh, and, and even things that we make up, we, we say, well, that's not big trauma because I was numb and, and I didn't feel anything and, and I, I'm not going to make up anything about that. Well, that's fine. Uh, and, but the, actually when we breathe and feel and allow the emotions to move through, it don't actually have to be trauma. None of it has to be trauma. Right. right? So uh, it's just energy. Uh, but when the energy gets stuck, then it's another rock in the backpack. And so if I was climbing a huge hill and I had a backpack, a huge backpack full of rocks, and, and, and that maybe you're carrying 100 pounds or 
you know, a good, usually a backpack, 40 pounds. If you're going backpacking, uh, you, maybe you're carrying a hundred pound, you know, one time I hiked to have a soup by and my wife with my wife, she had Lyme disease and I ended up carrying her pack. And so between the two packs, I probably had about 85 pounds on my back and I was a good, probably 240. Right. So, um, it was a heavy load. Um, a lot easier if you just don't have to carry those backpacks. You might even be able to send them down on a helicopter or some, some mules and just walk, walk along, right? Exactly. Uh, so, along, yeah, so same thing with life. If we can remove one stone at a time or, or get to a point where we're not even carrying a backpack, we've found our way to accomplish more with less uh, by being smart versus working hard. Awesome, man. Let's talk about like a little bit of the culture that you grew up in. Um, what were some of the types of traumas that had a real impact on you specifically and how were those showing up to um, impact your life and business in a, in a kind of a disempowering way? So there's a lot to that. And, and I mean, the first thing that came up is racism and sexism. Now, I don't have, I don't know if I can name to you straight off like, well, this happened and then this tied to racism. Uh, so again, not a huge trauma necessarily. But it was comments constantly, oh, that black person, all oh, those dark-skinned people, all oh, that person who's not in our cult. Uh, you know, so pretty much anyone, we were in a small cult community, a few thousand people isolated in that community, and everything outside of that community were not God's people. So you got, you know, seven and a half, what, however many billion people on the planet, and out of those, there was only 3,000 that were the chosen ones. Uh, we were the chosen ones. So there's so many layers of stuff that that drug me down from having, even though my nature was never to be sexist or racist, uh, my conditioning was, uh, as well as to be elitist, right? So arrogance, pride, elitism, uh, uh, justification for, you know, uh, you know, I witnessed them like, well, yeah, we stole this from them, but they're not God's people. So, and this is for God's work. So that's, that's fine. Right. So there was dishonesty and hypocrisy and, and, and false pride and so many things, judgment, you know, layer upon layer, but I can't necessarily identify a key traumatic moment that made that happen. It's actually just, and that's along the lines of someone who hasn't gone through traumatic stuff. It don't have to be a big, oh, I remember this hard thing. Um, it, it's, it's just programming, right? So we got we to gotta be honest enough to reflect. And the key to all of this is openness to learning. They found, they used to believe that IQ you know, your intelligence was, your, your mental intelligence was the key to success. Nowadays, you're seeing all kinds, I'm seeing all kinds of articles and stuff out there where Elon Musk and Google and everybody are saying, hey, we're no longer hiring off of your, your resume and your uh, uh, credentials and your degrees. We're hiring off of ability, right? So a programmer, if they're a badass programmer, they've got a job. If they have good work ethic and fit the culture and and can kick ass, then they've got the job. It's it, they they've realized that it's more about who you are, what you are, not what that paper says. Now, on the emotional intelligence side of things, a key component to emotional intelligence is openness to learning, which in religious terms would be humility. Sure. But we've twisted humility into this weird construct of I'm nobody, no, it's nothing, and deflecting positive energy. But the real pure definition of humility is simply openness to learning. And openness to learning determines, because in life, lessons repeat until we get it, right? And so the more open to learning I am, the faster and easier I get that lesson. So everything in my life becomes more easeful. Instead of uh, being the definition of insanity, repeating the same thing, expecting a different result. I do something more scientifically. I notice the results. If it don't work, I stop doing that and do more of what does work, and my life inherently gets easier all the time. Makes sense. Makes now, sense. yeah, so if we were to go to my childhood, some of the more traumatic things, you know, one of the earliest memories uh, in my life, I was probably around three years old, and I can only, I didn't even remember this until 
one day I was driving in the mountains with my friend. Normally I'm this thrill seeker, you know me, like always doing this extreme stuff. And we're driving in Montana on top of these tall, tall mountains. We took this dirt road just up and up and up and up forever. And I'm looking down as he's driving. If I would have been driving, it would have been no issue. No fear whatsoever. I'd probably be going crazy fast and having a blast and pushing the edges and no fear whatsoever. So he was driving. I'm in the passenger side and I keep freaking out like in my body's like, oh shit as we're getting by all these tall edges i'm like this is really weird i don't i never have this response and so i i tuned in i'm like what is going on this got to be rooting rooted in some trauma uh and there's some feedback here there's something wanting to be released and and freed up here so i called my older sister i'm like hey this is happening i feel inspired to reach out to you and just ask you what what's going on do you know anything and she says, well, do you remember uh, that time when dad was, got drunk, uh, was driving with the whole family in our little blue car, uh, and, and your older brother Brandon wouldn't stop crying, and your dad got really pissed off and told him, shut the fuck up, and pulled up to the edge of a cliff and uh, told him, uh, you know, you guys will shut the fuck up and conform or I'll drive off this cliff and, and we'll all die. And then he surged the motor and slammed on the brick, like threatening, like putting us right up to the edge. And then I had this flood of memories of, of having reoccurring dreams all through my childhood of being on that exact cliff driving off that cliff in that car and all kinds of various versions, versions where we crashed, versions where we hit a trampoline and bounced back up and landed safely, all kinds of crazy dreams that I had had as a child. And now all of a sudden everything made sense. Well, I sat and reflected on that. Like, what's the message? How's this impacting my life? And what I discovered was, uh, you know, I've had a really hard time owning my voice. Early on in my coaching career, just to make a Facebook post was just horrifying. Yeah. Later, to make a Facebook video, horrifying. To speak in front of a group or to be in a traumatic, you know, a, a, you know tough situation like uh, eight years ago or something, um, my wife's dad uh, has the tendency to verbally abuse and he, him and his, uh, her mom got pissed at us, especially their daughter, and they came over to our house to voice their frustration. And we were prepared to have a conscious conversation. And we sit down and, and the dad, instead of saying, hey, we felt this way and, and this was tough and we want to work through this, he started telling my wife, uh, you're so damn selfish. You've always been such a selfish bitch. You only think of yourself. How could you do this to your mom? Blah, 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 blah. And all she did was not invite her mom to a thing that she felt like not inviting her to. <laughs> that is silly. And so this was a moment where that was a real life experience where that was tested. Am I a man that's going to sit and allow my wife to be abused because you have uh, an authority figure, my father-in-law, uh, so, you know, because I'm raised in a patriarchal society and a cult where uh, I'm younger, he's the authority, uh, you shut up, he's in charge. Yep. Uh, so that was my conditioning. That would be my conditioned response. My more innate response was, no, this is not okay. So having had the breakthroughs in the past, if that would have happened five, ten years earlier, I probably would have sat and allowed it. Mm. Having breaking, breaking through it, I stood up, stood right between them, and I said, you're not going to talk to her this way ever again. Said, I love you. And you, if you want to express feelings, that's fine. You want to have a dialogue where we can learn and grow and we can all look at this and see what we can learn from it? Great. We're ready. But you're not going to sit and point your finger and call names and De defame her character that's not going to happen not in my on my watch not in my house not and not it's just not going to happen anymore so you can either shift your your to your attitude and we can have a, a conscious dialogue or you can leave and they left mm -hmm. and they remained pissed for a long time 
Well, uh, I now have his massive respect and he's made some massive changes because I was willing to make that stand. So me clearing up that trauma, uh, and that's just one example of a thousand because these oh, things yeah. play out all over in our lives. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you're not comfortable owning your voice, you're not in your sovereignty, you're not in your power, and there's a, a million things that will happen in your life that, that it will cost tremendously, whether it's making money or having epic relationships or you know, standing in in a time when it's, it's required. And so uh, in that, so the key thing I learned on that cliff that I didn't even know I learned was you, sh you better shut your mouth or everyone might die, right? When someone says shut your mouth with force or, you know, you better be really careful about how you express yourself in any way or everyone you love will die, right? That's the deep underlying programming. Yep. And so that's something, you know, uh, it's with all these things, it's not like one and done either, right? Well, that's the thing. That's the next trap we fall into is, oh, I already cleared that stuff up. No, you came into this life with certain things you came to learn and expand through. And I, it's likely we chose the family or had some sort of an understanding of what family and situation we were coming through to. And that that was perfectly aligned and organized for what us as an individual most chose to learn and grow and expand into in this life. And so uh, the same patterns, uh, so like for the instance, this one thing of, of not owning my voice, I'm still uh, running into that. Right now I live in Utah. I have a strong... A uh, mastermind group that I'm involved in that I get a lot of high-end clients from. Well, I have this edgy retreat called Sextasy that's all about sexual healing because what I found in all the years of everything I've done, the deepest guilt and shame and trauma for everyone, whether molested or not, is around sexuality. Uh, even just the, you know, so many stories of that's gross, it's dirty, uh, uh, that's shameful. There's so many layers of that that undermine our confidence and success and peace that, that it's, it's probably the most impactful thing that we could do for the world if all we did was heal the sexual trauma and get people sexually liberated. And I don't mean like having orgies or anything. Sure. I mean being at peace with your sexuality, being clear on what your sexuality is and being in integrity with that. For me, that's a committed monogamous relationship with my wife where we are so deeply and intimately connected that we can talk about anything, explore anything that we desire to explore with each other and have a blast doing it within no guilt and shame, right? So another person, that might be an open thing or who knows, that's up to them. For me, that's my thing. Well, in this local community, uh, the feedback I'm receiving is that I haven't laid a good context with my marketing because the way it's being perceived is that I'm promoting an orgy. Mm. Uh, sextasy, the, the initial perception is you're combining ecstasy and having an orgy is the message that's being received by a portion of people. Now, in the past, this would be just horrifying to me. Oh, man, all these connections and resources and opportunities and relationships and, ah. Uh, but after many years, it's like, I know who I am. I know what I'm up to. If you don't, that's on you. Sure. Uh, I, I receive the feedback that I probably ought to lay some more context and really make this clear. Because what I attempted to do was make it playful because it's such this deep, heavy topic, right? And if you make it, if I went on and I'm like, this shit's intense and you need to come <laughs> heal your sex <laughs> Like, sure. probably no one's going to show up to my retreat. Right. But I was like, hey, we're going to play with this. We're going to create a fun, safe environment. We're going to have a good time and you're going to have a much better sex life, right? So that's kind of the feel. Like, we're going to dance and move through this in friendly ways versus weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Sure. Well, then I didn't add enough context, apparently, because it's not going over so well. Mm. Um, but again, so the point of all that is uh, the same, whatever we think we healed, it's a layer. It's like a 40-story building or an 80-story building uh, with a spiral staircase. You're, there's still a north side, an east side, a west side, and a south side, and all those still pose the same challenges, just like winter 
summer, spring, and fall. But it's, you know, I don't have to suffer through winter. I can put on some extra layers and, and, and find what I love to do in winter and have a good time. I'm glad you're talking about this because I'm at a place where I've come to that conclusion and maybe it will change. I don't know, but this is where I'm at currently is I, I maybe <clears throat> every soul comes here, like you said, to learn a lesson. Uh, I'm finding that true to me. And it, like you said, it's whatever that lesson for me, it's very similar to yours it's about claiming voice, claiming power from a place of love, not from a place of force, not from a fuck yeah. you. Let me make you conform to my way. Uh, that yeah. was that was the environment I grew up in, similar to yours, not as extreme, but definitely very, very, very similar, just in a different um, environment, right? But I'm finding uh, it's just been kind of like you said, that spiral t staircase that's always evolving upward. And I'm experiencing that same trauma from a different layer, from a different perspective, yeah. as I'm really spiraling up on, you know, how you say, how good can you stand it? Um, yeah. And it's just been different fractals. It's been healing yeah. stuff with my father, healing stuff with my mother, healing stuff with yeah. my wife, healing stuff with my fucking father-in-law. And, you know, it's interesting me being in Romania right now because we came here four years ago, I think. And it was the first time I met Sarah's father. And, um, and I, I hadn't been through a lot of the breakthrough work and healing uh, then that I have done with you um, since then. And so when we first got here, I remember I was sitting in Sarah's bedroom with her or something, um, and we're just talking and dialoguing, and he comes in, and his question to her was, hey, did you guys get, um, are you getting a prenup? Now, I don't know what he did say that he's speaking in Romanian, so I don't know what the fuck he's saying, right? So I asked Sarah, I'm like, what the fuck is he saying? And she's, he, she's like, well, he wants to know if we're going to get a prenup, da, 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 da. And it wasn't for me about the prenup. I didn't give a fuck about the prenup. I just felt disrespected because yeah. I'm like, motherfucker, you haven't taken time to even get to fucking know me. And you want to sit here and fucking judge me, think I want your fucking shit that you got in Romania. I don't give a fuck about your stuff, right? Right. So I felt really disrespected. And dude, that sent me in like a whole tailwind for like, honestly, two weeks for the whole trip in Romania. Yeah. And now uh, we're, I can be with him. We're in, we are in a, I think where we were, we're in Ireland. He, he flew over and explored Ireland with us back in April. And um, I was driving on the wrong side of the road, which is the right side of the road there in Ireland, right? right? <laughs> Never have driven on, you know, a right-hand uh, driver. Uh, I had a huge van full of all our family. I think we took um, 15, 10 of us. I don't remember. We took the whole family there. And so he, he gets there and he's like, hey, have you, have you driven here? Like, no. He's like, oh, maybe we need a driver. It's like all of this fear like that of his that he was then putting uh, on to me. And I just kind of looked over him and smiled and said, Welcome to the adventure. Get in the fucking van and get the fuck out. I don't care what you think. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's going to laugh and he goes, all right. And then <laughs> like halfway into the day, he's like, man, you're a really good driver. And I'm like, thank you. I appreciate that. Awesome. <laughs> but before, dude, that would have totally yeah. crippled me. I would have felt disrespected. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would have felt like he didn't care about me. And yeah. now I was at a place like, ah, it's your shit. If you're afraid, that's on you. I'm good. So awesome. <laughs> so Awesome, dude. Well, what was the turning point for you um, where you decided to kind of take responsibility for these layers of trauma and you're constantly doing it? And that's one of the things that I really respect about you. Um, but like, what was the turning point? And um, yeah, what was the turning point for you? So I'll give a little build up for that in the shortest form possible. So short story, go through all these traumas in childhood. You know, decide I was entrepreneurial, so I launched a business in my late teens, build that for 12 years, have every material possession, a beautiful wife, feel like, you know, by external view and appearances, this guy's got everything. He's successful. Um, later, have a divorce, everything falls apart. That was a huge trauma in and of itself. And I go into just trying to drink away my problems, right? So I'm holed up in an apartment by myself, wouldn't even turn the lights on, blinds drawn, lights off all day, every day, uh, a few times a week, go to the liquor store and stock up and just hold up in this, this apartment uh, and just drinking a bottle to two bottles of the flavor of the day, every day, drinking myself constantly and maybe sleeping two hours a night and just incessantly just annihilating myself on the inside. And one night I reach a point where I'm like, I'm done. And so I pull out my gun and I put it in my throat and I'm sitting hand on trigger loaded. And basically the dialogue was, 
uh, and in the past I had come close to this before a few times and it was like, no, you can't do this. You'll go to hell. No, you can't do this. You'll hurt your kids or others, blah, blah, blah. And at this time it was like, none of that was working. Uh, and it was, I, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in hell. I don't believe in anything. Uh, obviously nothing or nobody's out there that cares. Uh, if I can find more reasons to do this or a better reason to do this than to not do this, then I'm going to do this. And it was a, a very different conversation. It was much more advanced than the previous ones mm -hmm. where there was, you know, fear. It was yeah. actually, I wasn't scared. It was like, this thing to do, let's do it. If it's not, let's not. Let's have a dialogue. And I'm having that dialogue in my head for an extended period of time with the gun sitting there. And then I just finally, I was drunk off my ass and I finally just got exhausted. Like, well, uh, I'm not clear one way or the other. I haven't found a better reason to or not. I'm not scared to do it. But if, if, if I can, you know, if that side of the dialogue wins, then here we go. So it was, it was as close as I had ever been, uh, probably as close as you can get uh, without actually doing it right at the door with the door open. Um, and then I finally just was like, well, I'm not clear, so, and I'm tired of sitting here, so I'm just going to go lay down. We'll, we'll finish this conversation tomorrow. When I got up, something was changed. I was just like, no, I, I need to address this shit. And before that, I had dabbled. And this is a thing I see common with certain people. They'll come to me in a, in a they'll be very high level producers. They'll come to me when they feel like they just, they can't do their life the way they've been doing it anymore. They'll have a massive up level and then they'll tell, tell themselves, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Like I'm so clear, I'm dialed. And then they go hammer down for a year or two. They create huge results, but they've only cleared up, you know, say 20% of their stuff. Sure. And now they're kind of, they hit the glass ceiling again and then they come out and see me and we, they kind of repeat that. But there comes a time, and that's what I had done in the previous years. I had had quite a few breakthroughs, got to this point, and at this point, something changed. It was like, you know what? I'm done dabbling with this shit, right? I'm done dragging the anchor whatsoever. And so I, I, I was using a legal, yellow legal pad for whatever reason. I guess it was the closest notebook at the time. And I wrote a bunch of stuff out. And I made some vows and commitments to myself, to life, to source. And it was like, no, for the rest of my life and from now on, my, my entire focus, all in, to become the greatest version of myself, to clear out any and all trauma, to eradicate any non-working patterns, beliefs, stories, conditioning, programming. Uh, I'm, I'm committing all in on the greatest version of me in this life. It's no longer about, Hey, up, up level me enough that I can continue to try to make this, this synthetic view on the life, uh, that I have work. It's no, I'm going all in to whatever it takes to eradicate anything and everything that is not my highest and best and to expand into the very absolute greatest version and reach my highest potential, whatever it takes. And so one of the things I've, I've realized since then is it is an ever unfolding journey, right? Mm -hmm. So people will tell me, no, no, I love myself. I'm like, no, like if you loved, 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 loved yourself, uh, you would never have a concern about money. You wouldn't have any struggles in any relationships. You would stop attracting this drama, trauma, bullshit in your life. You would like the world is at your fingertips. And so even the self-love topic, because the two pillars for me that I've discovered are most key is absolute unconditional self-love, which, which then enables us to love everyone else the same. Uh, and it enables us to receive, because if I don't, to the degree that I love myself, it determines how much I'll allow myself to be happy, successful, peaceful, financially prosperous, have epic relationships, like that's the foundation of all of it. The second pillar would be impeccable integrity, yeah. right? Impeccable integrity makes it sustainable. Self-love allows all the growth, all the expansion, all the, the goodness to come in and go out. Uh, the impeccable integrity allows that to be sustainable. Awesome. And so those two pillars are absolutely key. 
Now, what do you see is the best way for people to start finding healing? I mean, there's, there's so many paths up the mountain. Um, I know you're kind of, uh, I, I, maybe I'm wrong. I, I think you're of the philosophy of there's many paths up the mountain and, you know, yep. but there's therapy, there's counseling, there's coaching, uh, there's plant medicine, but what do you see is the best way for people to find healing? So the quote that goes with this really well is, is something along the lines of there's infinite paths up the mountain and the only person wasting their time is the one running around telling everyone else they're on the wrong path. So good. <laughs> so good. And even them, that, uh, that's probably their path currently and that's their lesson and they'll probably, you know, uh, be frustrated with that and feel like they're saving everybody until that grinds on them enough that they find their path and they'll head up the mountain. So even that one's probably a perfect path, right? Yep. So, uh, but when it comes to healing, I wouldn't say there's an ideal path for, uh, that we could say one size fits all because sure. everyone's unique and individual. So what I would say is, is educate yourself on every path that you can be aware of and then follow your heart on which one at what time calls to you. So one of the things I've witnessed on my journey is, you know, I have some friends because I'm, I'm the type of guy where uh, I love knowing as many skill sets, mindsets, abilities, paths, philosophies, cultures as possible because I learn something from every one of, or a lot of things from every one of them or I integrate more deeply. And what I've really found is they're all saying and offering many of the same things and they're overlaying and so when i have oh i witnessed and experienced this in native american culture and this in shamanic culture and this in the new age community and this in christianity or religion and this and everywhere it's like truth is truth wherever it comes from and and for me i love having access to that from every angle that i can find it so uh what i do is is I follow my heart. I feel like we don't lead with the head from, we don't, and really in life, the less we lead from the head, we lead from the heart. The heart tells us where to go and the head helps us navigate safely, right? So it's this dance between masculine and feminine. Yeah. Feminine has that inspiration of, yeah, this is the next best thing on your path. And masculine says, cool, how do we get there safely? So, uh, so but, the things that I've found, there's, there are some keys I've found that tend to be most helpful. Uh, breath work, yeah. uh, because it surpasses, because there's so much of the conditioning that happened before we even have cognitive memories, right? So therapy or talk therapy or any type of coaching processes uh, that are talk or, or cognitive based can bring us back as far as our memories go. Right from there, you've got to have something else either breath work, uh, uh, hypnotism, uh, medicine, plant medicine journeys. You got to have something else that, that is not about cognitive memories. Uh, and then the other thing, and, and breath, I can't overstate breath. Like you can accomplish if, if we had one thing. If I said, oh, if, if I was given, you can only teach one thing, it, it would probably be breath because you don't always have access to plant medicine or the environment to do that productively. Sure. Uh, you don't have, always have access to a hypnotist, but every one of us has access to the breath any moment, yeah, at dude. any moment. What is it about the breath that makes it so powerful? I mean, it's one of the things that we do at my event called the Uprising Adventure. And I'm, dude, I'm always blown away when we do the breath work peace where it takes people like i've seen people have these medicine journey almost like experiences with visions and colors from the breath work and um it's definitely not fucking me that's for sure. <laughs> that's coming through and guiding these people so what is it about the breath that makes it so special a lot of layers to that um just breathing uh, raises your frequency, right? So your body starts vibrating higher. So anything that's stuck in your being and your field that's a lower frequency, if one thing's vibrating at this rate and the thing that it's attached to is vibrating at this rate, can those two stay connected? No. No. And I, I wish I could move this hand at that pace and this hand at that pace at the same time because it would demonstrate it well, but 
when they're moving at a completely different frequency, it's released. So any trauma that's stored in the body, because that's where it's stored. It's stored not even up here. It's stored in the cells all throughout. And so if we look at the word disease, it's dis-ease, a lack of ease. So anything that's causing a lack of ease, stress, worry, overwhelm, uh, judgment, resistance, drifting, uh, whatever it is, uh, the root of all disease is a lack of ease. And so breath, so any trauma uh, is causing our physical disease. It started mentally, emotionally, became physical. Um, so whether it's a mental disease, and a, a, a physical disease, it's all rooted in the same stuff. So we can heal our bodies, we can heal our minds, we can clear emotions. So if you define emotion, energy in motion. So the only time it's, it's dis-ease is when it's not in motion, which is part of the emotional intelligence and the, the releasing of the trauma. So when we breathe, raises frequency. We also have naturally occurring DMT in our body. So you can release DMT through the breath if you go into like a deep shamanic breath or something like that. Um, and there's all kinds of breathing styles, of course, uh, and different patterns, processes, whatever, that create different results. Um, but it's such a fascinating topic, but, but to keep on topic, raises frequency, has the potential to release DMT, which could help you access, you know, Jesse Elder has this quote that I, I love. He says, uh, taking uninspired action is like having sex with your clothes on. Yeah. Right. So the value of, of releasing some DMT or getting into a deeply relaxed and inspired state is that I can generate, I mean, would you rather have life be a sex with your clothes on experience or a sex, juicy, sweaty, awesome, you know, full on clothes off skin to skin experience. I'm pretty sure the far majority of people want that skin to skin experience. Sure. Uh, and pretty much anybody other than the ones that have more trauma than they've, they need, you know, that they need to deal with. Anyone in a healthy state is going to want skin to skin. Uh, and that's our options in life. It's like, you know, go around having a miserable time, having a half-assed time, or having an amazing time. How amazing can we stand it is, is the real question to be asking. And, um, and so, an inspiration, creating a life from inspiration versus based off of all the, the files that we filed up here from the past, if we operate from creating a life from the files of the past, the future will be like the past. Yep. If we can receive, get ourselves in a state to receive inspiration, now we can create so much with anything, right? And so uh, I could go on and on, and we, for the interest of time, I'll cut it short, but breath uh, can heal trauma, it can release, it opens up flow, it releases the stuck energies, it raises the frequency, it opens up space for relaxation, and receptivity for inspiration, it gives us the ability to control our state in any given moment or choose our state or shift our state, not necessarily control, uh, and, and through that, create that life through inspiration versus condition patterns awesome. and belief. Awesome. For a lot of people, and I've experienced this myself, I feel like a lot of the trauma that I have had is in the space of life, it's like, um, I don't know what I don't know. And it's like, in, it's in that space. Like, I'm not even aware of it. And we talk about this a little bit. But for those who are maybe kind of like me, because I believe a lot of people uh, listening to this podcast are that way, what advice do you have for them to start identifying any possible trauma that may be holding them back? Is it as simple as like, they need to work with somebody outside of them, which is t a totally great path. I would highly recommend it. But what advice do you have? Uh, you know, if you look on a pie chart of what we know that we know, it'd be a very small sliver yeah. as to what's out there. If you looked at what we know that we don't know, so I know that I don't know how to do surgery. I know that I don't know how to do dental work. I know that I don't know how to do epic accounting and tax optimization or whatever. There's a lot of things I know that I don't know. And that sliver, so the sliver of what I know I know is like this big. The sliver of what I know that I don't know is probably this big. And then the rest of this pie is what I don't even know that I don't know. Yeah. And that's true of every single one of us, no matter how. In fact, the smarter you get, probably the bigger the that gets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I feel like I'm there. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and so certainly we all have tremendous, we have more blind spot than we have visual ability. And so the more, I mean, the it's like, would you rather just fumble around in the dark and, and stab aimlessly and hope that you, you're winning or would you rather find people? So I guess that would be a key thing. Absolutely get help. If you know, I think it's absolute insanity to not get help. Yep. Uh, you're just making it slow and hard. Why be in your ego and try to prove that you know it all uh, and that you can do it on your own when it could be so much easier? I mean, if you were given the opportunity, if Richard Branson or uh, some ultra successful guy that's having an awesome experience said, hey, I will mentor you for free and teach you everything I know and empower you in every way to create what I've created, who wouldn't jump on that? And sure. so uh, I don't know how to create that experience with Richard Branson, but I know uh, a lot of people that are phenomenal at their craft. And uh, so for me, what I choose is the best of the best. Uh, and they, for me, they must be uh, integrated and conscious and aware and have high, high impeccable integrity. They can't just be spouting off smart shit. Uh, I don't trust uh, people when they get on social media and say, look at my awesome life. It's so perfect. I read their energy. The energy never lies. So I go, is this person, are they grounded? Even if they're creating a lot of, you know, I know people that are making a shit ton of money, but I can tell they're not actually happy and fulfilled and balanced and, and there's many other struggles in their life. Right. So I go, I get as a line of, of uh, support or a guide or a coach or whatever uh, as I can get. Uh, I don't focus on, because none of us are perfect, right? The other thing we tend to do is, oh, let me see what's wrong with that person. Right. It's like, if, if, but I would rather learn. So say someone's making a lot of money. I would rather learn from someone that's making a lot of money that is actually also providing true deep value and deeply passionate about what they do than just someone that's making a lot of money and they're just doing it for the sake of, of money, right? Sure, sure. And so the more aligned they can be, the better, but the key principle would be definitely get help, but get it from people who have the results that you most want, right? Yep. And, and now, even along those lines, like one of the things I've continued to struggle with that I'm making tremendous progress on is I want a ripped body with six pack abs. Now I've been, I had that all through high school, abused the shit out of my body through my late teens and, and 20s. And I've been on a long journey since then. I've become an Ironman and all kinds of stuff. And even as an Ironman that could go hard and heavy for 18 hours straight, I didn't have six pack abs. I still had love handles and still had a belly. Uh, so no matter how fit I've become, no matter how healthy I've eaten so far, I haven't cracked that code. I, I could teach so much on health and fitness. I know deeply through experience about health and fitness on a tremendous level more than most people, but I still don't have apps. So it wouldn't be congruent for me to say how to get, if you're, if you uh, have, uh, love handles and six, uh, uh, uh belly, uh, I can help you get a six pack abs that no matter, I know probably more than most people about that, but I don't feel congruent to sure. be a guide on that cause I haven't accomplished it. Sure. And then most guides, how many fitness coaches are, are there out there on the internet? I can't even count them. Yeah. So many, but the far majority of them, I wouldn't hire because many of them just because they have a sexy body, they post pictures of their body and working out at the gym and assume that they can help you. Well, most of them can't help me. Right, the the person that can help me is the person who has been in my exact shoes and overcome it. Sure, sure. Uh, that particular fitness coach is a little more hard to come by. Yeah. You know, if they told a story and said, "Look, I struggled with this shit for twenty years. I tried everything. I became an Ironman. I did CrossFit for four years. I ate raw vegan for five years. I juiced. I cleansed. I fasted. I tried everything." And then I finally cracked the code. I'm like, that's my motherfucker right there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense, <I> <laughs> so yeah, get help, but make sure they have 
the ultimate result that you want and as, as congruently as possible. So for me, the four key areas are health, and now there's other areas, but if you handle these four, I think everything else kind of sorts itself out. My, my health and fitness, my relationships, my spirituality, and my finances. If I handle these four things, everything else tends to work itself out, especially yeah. if I'm really open to learning. Because instead, because part, you know, there's all kinds of learning around this. It's not just how do I eat and exercise. It's been learning to love myself when I'm chubby. Learning yeah. to, instead of looking in the mirror and saying, you fat, lazy, ugly fucker, look in the mirror and say, hey, thank you. Thank you for digesting my food. Thank you for taking care of me. Thank you for giving me energy. Thank you for keeping me warm. Thank you for keeping me safe. And I'm listening. What can I learn from you? What protections? Why are you here? What are you trying to teach me? What are you showing me? What unresolved trauma is here? So, again, so I've worked through so many layers of that and learned to love myself as a, the chubby version of me more and more and more, still so. so uh, kind of goes back to what you said earlier. Just you're always staying in a space, being open to learn. Yep. Lining with and the now, truth in this moment, open yep. to learning what is here. This morning when I looked in the mirror and flexed, it was the, the, the best experience I've had. And, and this is, I'm continuously on a trajectory right now where I keep having this experience every few days where, wow, wow, awesome, awesome. So it's moved less out of, you're a fat and lazy, ugly fucker, but I love you, thank you, to, wow, good job, dude. Like, I'm proud of you. You're doing great. Keep it up, right? So that's, that's where I'm at in that dialogue, and, and it's an awesome evolution. Awesome, it changes brother. everything. Awesome. What do you feel are some of the biggest pitfalls uh, that keep people from healing their traumas? People are scared to look within because they're scared of what they'll find, right? Because there's this underlying, if you study Gay Hendricks, The Big Leap, and Upper Limits, and all this stuff, one of the key upper limits is, I'm scared that I'm just fundamentally flawed. That's like probably the most universal one is deep down underneath it all. And that's the reason why some of these guys go all out on trying to earn lots of money. That's why I built my first sure. uh, success twice. I've, I've built to where I thought I was going to be set for life within a short period of time. I've had everything twice and lost it all. Um, and I'm, I'm on a good trajectory to do the third time. We'll see if we, we, we uh, stay there this time. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Uh, <laughs> but there's this fear. What if I look within and I discover that I truly am fundamentally flawed? What all am I going to find about myself? Will I be able to handle that? Uh, and so the, the, I guess the thing I would say is, yeah, you're going to see a lot of shit that's fucked up and it's going to be discouraging a bit. But when you get through that, if you stay committed every single time, what every one of us will find at the root of us is we are absolutely fucking magnificent and beautiful and perfect and divine. And there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing that needs to be fixed. We're just removing all the shit that's not you. And we're not even... We don't need to teach you anything. We don't need to heal you. We don't need to fix you. Uh, we don't need to seek and find all the answers to finally have peace and clarity. Uh, it's really a, a, a dance. And I call it a dance rather than a journey after watching Alan Watts' video. Great video if you haven't watched it. Life is not a journey uh, by Alan Watts on YouTube. Uh, he's like, no, it's like a, it's a song and a dance because a journey, it's like if I'm driving... It's, it's I'm going from here to there yeah. or flying and there's this time in between and then when I get there, I've arrived. Well, why would you, if life was about how good it can be, why would you ever want to arrive? Sure. Right? Sure. There's, it's not a destination of I'm arriving to that level of success because when I reach that level of success, happiness, joy, peace, love, passion, pleasure, connection, intimacy, all that's good, why not see what the next level is and just ever expand into that? So if it becomes this dance of pleasure, of joy, of expansion, of adventure like a child, now we're talking, yeah. right? And so... Uh, I like just, the dance, man, because there's yeah. the push and the pull of the dance too. 
Yeah. And, and I, I find for me, uh, life requires me some, like I, it comes back to my ability to have an awareness, but sometimes I do have to push and sometimes I do have to pull and sometimes I do have to lean forward and sometimes I do have to move back or sidestep or, or whatever. But if I can just enjoy playing the game because I love the game or if yeah. I can just dance the dance because I enjoy the dance, uh, yeah. then I think we, maybe that's the key to having the ultimate yeah. human experience yeah. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> So we're about to wrap up here, man. A couple more questions. Um, from your experience, if somebody doesn't take the time to look and heal from their trauma, um, what impact is it going to continue to have on their life and business? So, of course, it's the anchor down, right? So yep. you're always going to have to work harder, work longer, out-hustle the competition, be in a comp constant state of war or competitiveness. Uh, you're not going to be able to relax and, 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 and expand into the greatest version of ease, peace, joy, success, profitability, connection, intimacy. You're just, it's always a war. You can observe it and there's plenty of influencers out there that promote the shit out of that. Yep. Uh, they're just, uh, their life is a war, right? And uh, I'm making as much money as some of the highest producers in the industry and I don't even start my work day till noon. So good. Right. So I get up at six o'clock in the morning. I've got six hours to, uh, first I'm with myself for about an hour showering, taking care of myself. Uh, I get my, then I, I'm totally up and alert and feeling amazing. I've done just personal care for the first hour. Now I, I work with my wife, we get our kids up, get them off to school, and now I've got quiet time. Now I connect with my wife for a while, then I go work out, then I meditate and study and do all these things to get myself in a place of power before I start my day. Uh, I might handle a couple of text messages and emails and a little social media day. Now at noon, after I've handled all that other stuff, right? So, you know, we're talking 10 o'clock. I'm now handling a couple of logistics in my business, my life, maybe scheduling a trip. Like, you know, yesterday I was scheduling a Valentine's trip for my wife and I and just knocking her socks off with epic adventure after epic adventure and ordering her gifts and surprises to speak her love language and making all these deposits in her world while taking care of myself. Then at noon, I have typically I just schedule two to three sessions a day with 30 to 60 minutes in between to nurture myself and to take it easy and to handle logistics and whatever needs to be handled in between so that my life is a continuous state of ease, flow, spaciousness, relaxation, joy. Now, on those on times, I'm dialed, right? Like I'm giving them the very best of me. I'm spacious, I'm relaxed, I'm in a state to receive continuous inspiration for myself and others. And so I'm delivering max value from within my zone of genius so that it's something I absolutely love. It's not a grind whatsoever. It's like play. Like I wouldn't, uh, there's nothing else I'd rather be doing in that moment. Go all in, give it all I got, rock their world, do that for two, three people a day, once every few months, host a retreat, love that too. And the rest of the time, I'm expanding, maybe building out a, a funnel or a new product or line or offering some other solution that's going to really rock people's world. Uh, I would much rather have my life than, than that. And I actually have the capacity to create more income through that than the hustle and grind because of the, the state of being at which I'm doing it. So good, man. And on the flip side, um, like what are you seeing are the results of people um, who are actually taking the time to heal the, heal the traumas? You've kind of outlined it. It, so, it sounds like we just probably just simplify it and it's going to anchor here for people, but just essentially having a life of flow, freedom, joy, happiness, more money with less, uh, it's not really like effort. Uh, it's just like you're not putting in as much time, uh, but you're putting very focused effort to create create the money. You know what I mean? It's not like we're not talking about like law of attraction. We're sitting here and fucking meditating and self care and money's raining down from heaven. Like you're putting in a uh, very strategic work, but as a result, it's a, a lot more simple to receive it. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, you know, it's uh, to summarize it, that inspiration thing, take your clothes off, right? Yeah. <laughs> Have the full experience. So getting yourself in a state of inspiration and the results, uh, I could, I could name person after person. The results are just insane. 
They're so much more happy and peaceful. They spend way less time doing stupid stuff. They're really just honing in on, and, and the whole, the zone of genius conversation ties to this so deeply because zone of genius doesn't mean you're smart, you're a genius. It means there's certain innate gifts, talents, and abilities that you have that, that you can utilize to solve problems in people's lives, to make their lives better, uh, that solve major problems they're willing to pay a lot of money for. But because it's from that particular thing that, that's innate to you, it's the deepest, most fulfilling, most enjoyable thing possible. And so now even your work is play. Uh, you have more energy. It doesn't drain your energy. It fuels your energy. Awesome, man. Right? And so uh, the, the end result, these guys make infinitely more money with way more ease and grace. Uh, they have a balanced life. So for me, true success is my health is rocking, my spirituality, I have a deep sense of purpose and fulfillment and feel aligned with my true nature. So when I say spirituality, I'm not talking religion or woo-woo. Right. I'm talking, right. I know who I am and I feel inspired and connected and driven by, by a mission, a purpose, and I feel deeply fulfilled. Uh, financially, I have the means to make choices uh, from a place of freedom, from choice, not what can I afford, what's most expansive, what's most enjoyable, what, what's most expansive for myself and others. Uh, and then uh, relationally, everything's relationships. Relationship with self, relationship with source, relationship with others, that's the source of everything. That's the, my relationship with myself determines my health. My relationship with myself determines my relationship with others, with source, with all of it. So relationships is absolutely key in all of it. But uh, if so, true success for me is I'm thriving and expanding in all four of those areas. Uh, so awesome. Awesome. And then for people that want to learn more about you, uh, they want to figure out like how they can work with you. Um, you want them just to go connect with you on Facebook, just facebook.com slash Christopher John Ascending. Um, I know you have a few one-on-one -on -one coaching spots available. You have some, some really cool breakthrough stuff available. You have business team consulting, leadership stuff, adventure retreats. You talked about sex to see retreat. I think you're going to have a couple, one or two of those coming up in 2020, right? Got one coming up in February, uh, just before, or just after Valentine's, right around Valentine's. We've got, I think it's just after Valentine's. Awesome. Uh, and so sex to see retreat. Awesome. And I can like personally attest to Christopher, man. I mean, um, I'm at a place where I'm making more money than I ever have. I'm doing it while traveling in Europe, which has its own very unique set of challenges. Um, but you have honestly been a, a big catalyst for me helping, helping me heal a lot of the traumas. I mean, we talked about one with my father-in-law and things of that nature. And there's been multiple, multiple uh, scenarios, uh, more connection with my wife, a fatter bank account, more connection with my brother, sister, mother, um, to the point now where if they have shit going on in their life, um, like they're picking up the phone and being like, what do I do? And, <laughs> and even healing some of their shit um, as well, dude. And it, that's because of you. I'm sharing the story because anybody who's listening, uh, Christopher's like the fucking real deal, no bullshit, um, all about results. And that's one of the things that I, I genuinely love about you. You're an amazing, amazing human being. And uh, thank you so much for being raw, for being real, for being vulnerable, and just sharing what you've shared or what you've learned um, here today, man. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, there you have it, my friend. Advice from one of the masters when it comes to healing um, from trauma, childhood trauma, adult trauma, any trauma, right? I'll tell you firsthand, this is the work many entrepreneurs run from. I mean, like many people want the tactics and the tools because they believe like that's all there is to the game. Remember, the tactics and tools are just part of the game, yet it's this inner work that always seems to move the needle for high achievers. So if you truly want to see how good life can get, like how good can you truly stand it? Like how little effort is truly required to create more dollars in your bank account, more connection and intimacy with your partner, your spouse, more fun with those you love? I'm here to tell you, when you dive into your darkest pits of darkness, for when you're willing to go there, you will find how much love and light you have to give to the world. And as a result, you'll experience more money, more love, and more purpose as a natural byproduct. I'm also here to tell you if you feel like you've lived big and lost much and you trust a few people, 
Christopher can help you realize and fulfill your potential, make a significant impact in the world, and reap the rewards for all you've contributed and endured up to this point. Now, if this speaks to you and you want to learn more about Christopher and what he's up to uh, and want to connect with him on Facebook, simply go to facebook.com slash Christopher John Ascending and you can connect with him on Facebook. I know he has some really cool things going on. Um, we talked about his sex to see event. That's all about diving into your insecurities around sex. We already talked about um, he has spots open for coaching and um, retreats and stuff like that. So make sure you go check him out. Facebook.com slash Christopher John Ascending. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. But before we go, I want to offer you the opportunity to take your life and business to the next level. In this episode, I had Christopher John Stubbs come on and talk about how childhood trauma impacts the growth of your business. And we touched on ways to find healing. I found it's really hard to do this type of deep work on your own, but with a little personal guidance and the right group of people in the right environment, the sky is the limit. So I'd like to invite you to check out my three and a half day transformational event called The Uprising. It's an even deeper dive into what you've learned in this episode, and it helps you collapse five to ten years of healing and breakthroughs into three and a half days. Rest assured, it will help guide you to a whole new level of peace, power, and profits in your life and business. Now, I only allow ten people to join me for each event, and I only hold this event once a quarter. So if you're serious about unlocking more freedom and success in your life, then head on over to www.uprisingadventure.com, watch the short video about people's experience, and then schedule a time to talk with me to see if you're a good fit for the event. Now, I hope to see you at the event. You can go check that out at uprisingadventure.com. And uh, man, I look forward to you coming back next time for a new episode of the Anthony John Amix podcast. Until next time, my friend, I'm out. Peace. Well, that's all I've got for this episode of the Anthony John Amix podcast. But we have plenty more to help you become unstoppable in life and business. So head on over to ajamix.com for exclusive resources, information, and tools to help you break through to a new level of freedom, purpose, and success. I look forward to having you back for the next episode. Bye for now.